Hello, and thank you so much for joining. My name is Kevin Bryce, and I'm one of the solution architects here at Accesso. And I'm really excited to speak to you today about exceeding guest expectations, especially this year with limited staff. I like to start most of my presentations with a quote. Uh, so this one is, life is like skiing. Just like skiing, the goal is not to get to the bottom of the hill, it's to have a bunch of good runs before the sun sets. And I really appreciate Seth making that quote, and I'd like to adapt it just a bit to the content that I'm about to share with you today. I think it's always tough uh, to get into the moment of any struggle or the, the situation of any plan uh, and really get confounded with you know, the nitty gritty of what we're trying to get done. Oftentimes we see this surface itself with fears or apprehension around adding tech to a ski environment or changing operations or fulfillment uh, globally from how a ski hill may operate. And we just wanna remind you at Accesso that we know that all of that is a strifeful and not always really what your guests are looking for. When your guests come to the mountain, they're looking to be in the snow. They're looking to relax, they're looking to have a calm day, and they're looking to forget about typically the tech and the operational impacts that their day jobs or regular lives may normally bring to the table. And so that's not really our goal. It's not our goal to wow the guests with a great technical landscape or completely redo your operations, uh, but whether rather to supplement and to make it improved and better, but to stay focused on, on what that true simple goals of your guests generally are, which are we're often relaxing, being in the sun, enjoying the snow and escaping. All right, I wanted to start, uh, we have a, a great partner of Mount Bueller that we, that we have some experience working with in the past. Uh, and you may not know, but they're actually a full half a season ahead of our normal North American uh, resorts. Now they're, they're located down in Australia uh, and they've got a pretty large operation. And so they have a large ski school uh, and a large rentals operation that they need to staff up and handle every year. Now this year coming out of COVID, uh, was a different climate than they're used to. Uh, a lot of their staff are actually not Australian locals. Uh, they will be traveling from other countries for the season to come not only to get the work uh, and to get some travel in, but also to see Australia and to you know really uh, you know go from somewhere that maybe doesn't have snow to somewhere that they can you know envelop and work in the snow. And so part of the problem was that that staff was not able to travel. They weren't fundamentally able to leave their home countries and travel into Australia. Now, the second part of that problem came with housing. A lot of the Australians that lived in the bigger cities and live in the you know, more populated downtown areas knew that with COVID uh, and with the year that we've had, they might as well work from home more remotely. And so those mountain escape areas where you know, skiing happens in the winter became the summer vacation getaways from COVID. So in addition to having the hardship of getting staff to come uh, from out of the area to work, the housing that that staff would normally rent and occupy is extra expensive. Extra expensive being populated by those trying to escape the cities and be in the rural areas to work remotely. And so Mount Bueller knew this problem and needed to address this problem about a full six months ahead of all of our North American friends who are working and addressing that problem you know, very much now. And they made a lot of really smart decisions. And I wanna call out that it was not only important for them to evaluate the current landscape uh, and admit that this year was gonna be different than others, but also to look at what their guests truly need and prioritize from that perspective down. And you can see that in the three examples of changes that they made. They moved all of their sales for ski school online. And this really reduced their in the ticket office burden. It really sped up their throughput and allowed them to interact in a much more technically conversational manner with their guests before they arrived. They also required that those lessons be booked in advance. You couldn't book them same day. They actually locked out the inventory if you tried to book it even online same day. And that really allowed them to plan. They knew days well in advance that their lesson inventory was totally booked before they got to that day and could try to adjust or move around their staff as needed and on days that were light uh, or didn't get fully preoccupied, they were able to adjust, lighten their staff load, or even have lighter classes uh, and give a better guest experience because of it. They also limited and focused their offerings. They no longer had the entire roster of the loftier, you know, much more uh, types uh, of ski school and rentals that you could pick, but really tried to go down the middle of the road and really offer truly what the guests needed this year, uh, you know, from the things that you know, they could uh, manage. 
Now, Mount Buellers, you know, definitely still in the middle of their COVID situation and, you know, doing strides to, to improve and change along the way. Um, but I'd just love to point out that, you know, by being forward, by being early, and by being willing to admit that this year was different and things needed to change, they were able to get in front of their problem. All right, love to talk a little bit about Accesso before we get into some of that, you know, cool tech and how we think that it fits. All right, this is a great, cool visual representation that really the only thing I want you to get out of it is there's a lot of different tiers where the technical parts of your ski company uh, or, or even your third party uh, that may be working with us, you know, could interact with. You can kind of see from the top down, you know, we do have a full encompassing solution, you know, whether it be, you know, part of the guest identity, the rental ski school, some of that advanced ski tech, uh, even queuing, ticketing uh, and seating. Uh, so we, we can offer everything all inclusive under that, you know, one big connected experience hat, or we can certainly connect and offer you uh, any subset as well. And that's kind of those great integration opportunities that we have from the Accessos cloud platform. Uh, we can integrate and tie in your third party entitlements, your third party CMS and content information, your third party identity and OAuth2 providers and different ways for your guests to use social providers to get into your applications and you know, transact. Uh, and from the output, we can connect to your apps. If you don't wanna use any of our applications or our web presences, you know, we certainly can work with you and third parties to build your own from our published you know, public REST APIs. Uh, and so Accesso, you know, while we do uh, occupy a full, you know, a full product offering in the ski space, we're also really happy to work with you on new ideas, new innovations, uh, and really, you know, new approaches that could change our core offering or, or even just supplement your new offerings as well. Now, this next slide uh, is a little bit more on the marketing uh, perspective, but I, but I like that it offers, you know, kind of the value add of that full connected ski offering. And so the way that we really like to usually describe this image is that there's these two before uh, or these two after items that most ski businesses, you know, are, are really good at already. You're pretty, you know, good at following up with your guests and understanding how their trip went. Do we see that often with bounce back email campaigns uh, or, you know, or similar ways of reaching out on social media or, or even just, you know, getting a survey as the guest is leaving the parking lot. Uh, and then promotions as well, you know, having billboards, posting on Facebook, letting your guests know that, you know, the night skiing is going to be open special this week. You know, that kind of stuff is, you know, the bread and butter that our ski resorts that have lasted, you know, 50, 60, 70, 100 years have been doing great for a very long time. And the before as well, uh, the before, you know, kind of ties in the, you know, the planning, you know, when are we going to have our discounted days? Do we stage ticket pricing and do, you know, different ticket prices in different, you know, climates? Do we allow advanced booking? Do we, you know, try to predict when our guests may or may not be coming and what days are going to be busier or lighter? Uh, and when the guest actually arrives, when their ticket gets scanned, when they go on the lift for the first time, that they're here. You know, all of that information, you know, we, we wouldn't be offering you anything too special by trying to give you those five circles. You know, that's the bread and butter of most good operations. And you know, generally the, the core entries into your first ticket taking POS system. Now that really gets you to the special part and that's the connection during. Uh, and this is really where we think that our bread and butter is at Accesso. And you know, not only that we have those five before and after opportunities, but all these great food and beverage retail upgrade, virtual queuing, rentals, location aware triggered experiences, past behavior analytics, and even you know identity segmentation. And then geocentric data and ticket sales can all come into that great central puzzle of what does the guest need from the system today. And you'll hear me talk more about that in a moment, but that's the conversational tone that, that we at Accesso try to maintain through all of our interactions with our guests. We really want to learn about them based on their interactions, their choices, the inputs from your different third-party systems to our system, you know, their choices in our system, and even there are inferred choices from multiple of their actions in our system. What might you be needing next? Is it, you know, is it a time that you, you've been on site for a while and, you know, we might need to consider keeping you there a bit longer or better yet, we've noticed that you've had a full day, you know, and we want to encourage you to come back, you know, to another day. And so that truly comes together and it's a, it's a notion of pairing our geocentric data with that guest characteristic intelligence. So geocentric meaning that everything in our system has a latitude, a longitude, 
a, a known radius uh, and a general understanding of its size and the distance from the other items that pertain to it. Uh, and we, we apply this everywhere. We apply it to our guests and their interactions at our park, our points of interest, our food and beverage eateries where you're ordering and, and interacting with the food locations, uh, even things that are far simpler, uh, rides, wait times, uh, getting to events, and even you know temporary events that could only be there today. Because we use the geocentric backbone in our platform, everything is relationship driven and able to interrelate and, and connect experiences from one to the other. Now we pair that with our characteristic data. That's all of the learning on the last slide from the guest based on their ins and outs, what we already knew about them, what they're telling us about them. And even as they change and grow, you know, as a single person who was skiing double blacks their entire life, suddenly starts showing up on the greens and booking kids lessons, guess what? We infer that they, ha that they got married and had, had children, you know, and that their preferences and what their full day of activities may look like has totally changed. And that conversational tone that, you know, we had been, you know, calling them dude and saying, hey, have a great time and here's a 20% off at happy hour may no longer be the right conversational tone to maintain that relationship with that guest. And that's really where we set ourselves aside is that, you know, we're not learning once about your guests. We're not importing the data from your system and setting a characteristic attribute that we then maintain forever. We are constantly bettering our, our understanding of the guest, bettering our conversational tone with them and trying our best to stay out of their way. Uh, and all of that together delivers that, you know, just what they need in the moment, allowing them to stay focused on skiing. All right, I'm going to start this video for you. So this is a really cool representation at Mammoth Mountain uh, of some of that geocentric and characteristic data, uh, all in a great visual format for you to see. So what I'm showing here uh, at a random day on Mammoth uh, are our guests, uh, as our platform has detected them both in the village and on the hill. And now what I'm doing, I went ahead into our target user, and I've gone ahead and selected a, a target that they indicate to us. So our guests tell us, are they a skier or a snowboarder? And now you can actually see the live location of those who have indicated skiing as orange or those who have indicated snowboarding as red on the map. Now here's an inferred characteristic. This is actually called shipping state. It's one of the items that we ingest uh, or, or in integrate with a third party. And from their uh, identity system and their knowledge about their guests, they share that information with us to become part of that characteristic segmentable conversational attributes to our guests. Now, shipping state's a tough one, but we often will do in-state discounts or even in-state updates uh, with that. But there's, of course, a whole wealth of different types of characteristics that you can drive and communicate with. Now, you, this is just the live view, though. You know, looking at the heat map right now and seeing where my guests are, that doesn't even get into the depths of you know when you turn the system on its own and allow it to communicate automatically. All right, and here comes an example of some of that automatic communication. Uh, so in this scenario, uh, we have some first time visitors. So somebody interacting with our platform and our location that we really haven't seen a lot from before. Now we know that there's two adults and there's two kids in their party. Uh, and from their geocentric data, we're, we're inferring that they, we think they're approaching the front entrance. Now it's the afternoon. We know that they arrived six hours ago uh, and that you know more than likely by approaching the exit at this time, this is likely the last time they're gonna approach it and they're probably gonna leave. And so our system inferring the scenario, our knowledge about the guests and the opportunity and the desires of this park, which you can see that benefit top right, where we're really trying to drive some additional revenue. We're gonna offer to this guest the opportunity to apply the price they already paid for their daily tickets today to upgrade to a season pass. And that by doing that, they're gonna save on, on the total price of returning. Now it's a great value for these guests. They've only been here once, but if they've truly had a good day and we've done our job, they're probably already thinking about coming back. And that, that's, you know, that, that conversation isn't a surprise to them. It's actually, it might be the tip that just hasn't quite, you know, surfaced into words, you know, for them yet. Uh, and if they, you know, if they haven't had a good day, you know, it gives us a great opportunity to continue a conversation for them to, to not want that and for us to have the simple group analytics of the, the marketing campaign landing or not landing, or even the opportunity for customer service and that guest to, to you know, formalize and have a, a thorough conversation. Uh, and so it's inferred data that would be triggered by the platform automatically. You know, there's no one sitting in an office sending sending this update, you know, to this family. But because that automatic system determined that it's time to have a conversation, it, it opens up that channel uh, and continues that sales opportunity with your guests.
All right, uh, and just uh, to give some statistics behind some of that messaging that we've seen. Uh, so targeted messaging uh, makes a huge impact. And by targeted, we mean using some of those characteristics you saw on the map, the, the shipping state, the, the information that the, the guests may tell us about you know, their, their, uh, their style or, or their interactions. Uh, and then the inferred choices, you know, after they've made purchases, after they've bought food, after they've ridden lifts and rides, and that, that granular information that our platform learns on their own, we're able to take all of that and deliver marketing campaign targeted segmentation. And so typically this is, uh, this is a pinpointed campaign that we have a very specific KPI that we're aimed at. You know, it could be something like season passes, it could be a dining plan, you know, anything could make a good example. Uh, but I went through some of our recent records and wanted to share three big single message trackable campaigns. And so this is us uh, in, in um, Experience Promoter, which is the tool in our back end that allows us to configure this conversational messaging, setting up a demographic you know, from those tags and from that segmentation and scripting a conversational message that drives a action. So this one was driving actions in the form of a, a funnel completion. You know, they needed to go and make a purchase or they needed to go and complete a, an online activity that, that we, we sent them off to. Uh, and we're able to actually directly track those conversions. And so the top three that I was able to find through my, my recent digging, uh, one of those messages, we were able to track nearly $2 million uh, in conversions, another one, 1 1.5, and a third one, about 400,000. Now those are directly trackable sales. So that doesn't speak at all to the total guest impact. A guest that may have saw this campaign was reminded that this was important to them and simply pulled out their laptop to go and complete the purchase would not have gotten tracked. And so they did not count in that 1.9 million. These are the people that are that are doing it in the app through, you know, from point A all the way to point Z through our funnel conversion. Uh, and so you can really, I mean, the takeaway from this slide, uh, if nothing else, is this type of conversational segmented messaging works. Guests want to be talked to, you know, in the tone that they communicate. They want to hear about the things they care about and they want to be told about the offers they need just in time. They act just in the moment. If it's a tap away, a click away, if I can interact with a push notification and be landed at what I needed that I didn't even know I needed yet, it's a much quicker, easier you know, conversion. And we see a lot of success with that you know, across the board with all of our clients. All right, so that was a more of the flavor of a, a conversation that's targeted and planned and KPI driven, uh, you know, and a little bit more time specific. Uh, the system can definitely keep the conversation going on its own. Uh, we at Accesso call these automations and we actually break them into four primary categories of automations. Uh, the four images on the right are not the four categories. Those are just four examples uh, from the first category, which is location based automations. Uh, so this is based on the guest's location uh, and even the guest repeat location, uh, both granularly entering points of interest in your park, or even more globally, entering your park's geo you know, radius as a whole. And you see a couple examples of those in the image. We also have action-based automations. So actions could be making a, uh, making a choice uh, into the app, filling out a guest preference questionnaire, uh, you know, riding a lift or ride, uh, or using part of Accesso's internal systems. We also have time broadcast messages. Uh, and so this is um, a, a message that's set up that's going to come out of the system cyclically uh, or at a specific time or duration that's planned in advance. And then we have commerce and food and beverage based automation. So these could be based on a purchase, based on having a certain entitlement, based on buying two food and beverage categorical purchases. You know, I could give you the example that after we notice that this guest has purchased alcohol twice or three times, we automatically start sending them happy hour notifications to remind them you know, that there's discounts uh, at the local alcohol selling facilities nearby. Uh, and of course, other permutations and combinations of growing these together. These are, these are where we start. Uh, and then with all those tags, characteristics and geocentric data, we can kind of you know, add in the layering of more complicated design and automations. All right. So that was Accesso. It's kind of our bread and butter, uh, what we consider ourselves to be okay at and what we consider ourselves to be growing into and trying to improve you know, quickest for the ski industry. Now, that didn't talk about COVID really at all. And I know that this is a special year and it's got special considerations. And really, if nothing else, we, we felt a big catalyst for change. 
you know, a catalyst of people not wanting to be grouped together in indoor facilities, a catalyst of people not wanting to stand really close together in lines outside, a catalyst of guests really wanting to understand their vacation ahead of time to know what they're signing up for and know that they won't be disappointed, uh, and a catalyst of guests really wanting to understand the climate. How safe is your facility? How many precautions do you have? Are you considering my health and my safety first? And is that somewhere I truly want to visit? All questions new to us. We did not have those in 2019, but we as operators and as those providing services to these great facilities need to consider to retain all those great guests that we've had year over year. So we talked about it's new expectations, just a new normal. Uh, everything about this year, we, we can't look back to the past and try to repeat, it just won't fit. Guest expectations are up. We see that 67% of consumers uh, state that a good experience uh, is really important to them and higher than ever. They're no longer happy with the clunky, you know, somewhat put together, delivered via email, you name it. That just doesn't fit anymore. We know it's possible. We've seen tech companies innovate in this space throughout the pandemic, and it's just fundamentally not something that we're willing to leave behind. Personalization as well. 58% of our guests are willing to pay more for services targeted to their individual personalities. Very much that conversational tone and that just-in-time, you know, preference-driven messaging like we were talking about. 72% want a website to already know what they're looking for. They want to be told what they need, not, not you know, left to browse and discover. And 66% assume and expect that websites communicate with each other. They're already assuming that all of your systems are communicating. And we know, being the tech leaders of the industry, that even our own own systems at times struggle to communicate. So the expectation is not only that we at a company at Accesso have all of our systems in check, you know, talking great, and then, and then we at Accesso being a vendor for your different mountains, you know, have, have connected to the mountains and that's working great. But then our partners and vendors and other third parties that we're working with and you're working with, our, our guests and, and those visiting our mountains assume that all of it already works. It's all already magically tied together and communicating, you know, and, and they have the expectations from that. Things like if I've told you my name already, why do I need to tile it, you it again? If I've already entered my credit card details, why do I need to enter them again? Hey, didn't you just ask me yesterday what type of skis I like to ride? Why are you asking me again? All of that is no longer a valid expectation of the tech landscape that we operate under. You know, guests have these new expectations and they expect it to understand and deliver upon their needs. Uh, and the final stats that we really want to share that, that we're really sensing coming out of COVID is that guests have truly shifted to mobile. And we don't necessarily mean mobile, purely native applications. We mean mobile devices. So mobile responsive web applications, native iOS and Android applications, and even mobile friendly entitlements uh, and mobile friendly purchase flows that get the guests from what they want to do all the way on to the activity that they're doing. 55% using their smartphones for the majority of the time they're awake. 60% will not use a site or an app that loads slowly and guests are two times more likely to convert on mobile. Uh, transactions as well, uh, you know, similar to mobile, we're seeing that 56% of transactions are happening on mobile devices, and that's a 5% increase. 72% of global e-commerce purchases in 2021 alone uh, were you know, expected to occur on mobile, and 85% of Americans now have a smartphone, that's a 35% increase. So, you know, again, continuing to support the mobile, you know, the mobile direction, we're seeing that in addition to the personalization and guest uses on mobile, transactions are also happening on mobile. That, that belief that we had before that anything serious would, you know, you'd pull out your laptop to make a serious purchase or you'd pull out your laptop to book a flight or do anything official, that's no longer the case. Our, our audiences are happy completing all of their interactions on a mobile to-go platform. All right, well, I really appreciate you sticking with me through all of that great lead-in. Got to talk a lot about Accesso, talk a little bit about uh, you know, where we're at this year uh, and some of how the considerations from this year and our geocentric guest characteristic uh, you know, platform pairing data you know, can, really, can really shine. Uh, and I wanted to cover that in three different areas that, that we really feel that we're a great form fit. Uh, the first one is embracing the move to e-commerce. That's that, you know, that both mobile and web-based ticketing uh, and really getting a lot of that 
fulfillment and design early. The second one is unifying the guest experience. Uh, that's you know tying together all that great guest characteristic information, making it geocentric and localized, and putting everything from food and beverage ordering, entitlement purchasing, walking directions, you know, show times, you name it, all at the fingertips of our guests. And the third one uh, is reducing, and you know, kind of what we're going to get to, which is removing lines fundamentally. All right, embracing the move to e-commerce. I know this is not a new topic. This is certainly something that you've heard about probably for the last 10 years, but in the spirit of the catalyst of COVID and even more so with you know, knowing that we're having a hardship like Mount Bueller, getting staff in the doors today, filling our ticket office uh, you know, and our base areas with you know, people to help, we really need e-commerce this ski season. The e-commerce does a lot of great things for you. Uh, a lot of times people think of it as, you know, just a online version of your POS system, and it is not. It is an online version of your POS system, your ticket office, and your ambassador program, because the e-commerce system that Accesso provides links all of these offerings together. It starts at the tickets and it'll give you, you know, the whole calendar view of, you know, when are ski, you know, ski vouchers available, when are multi-day tickets available, are there cross, you know, overarching passes that I could consider more ski areas than I, you know, originally planned on from the ticketing. But then we move into the passes, the connected rentals and lessons, food and beverage, and then even pre-setting and pre-getting experiences and events. The e-commerce, you know, should streamline it. It should, you know, allow you to start with that just-in-time need that you know you wanted to go to the mountain, you need tickets, but learn and supplement and add to as you go. What it really satisfies for us is the self-service, and that's that ambassador paired with uh, the ticket office. You know, without interacting with an ambassador, you may have not even known that you know there's a new offering, that there's a new tubing hill, uh, or that they've recently changed the rentals program and that the advanced rentals is actually a really, really great deal. They've got some super great new skis and they're not charging for it. You know, we can help with that. The e-commerce flow can have that conversational tone. It can have those upsells. It can tell uh, the guests about all of the things that, you know, based on their personality characteristics, based on their previous purchases and interactions can be, you know, conversational and relatable for them. It's gonna allow your staff to focus on guest needs. You know, no longer are you the informer. No longer do you need to inform them and tell them about all these things, they're going to arrive on site with a decent idea, and many of them already pre-purchasing these items that are new to your site and that you're, you know, really wanting to facilitate. You're going to reduce the IT burden by doing this in advance. You know, from a tech-forward landscape, you're not, you know, bringing in printed-out email vouchers from lots of different third parties. You're not dealing with tickets that are sold at other mountains that your system just fundamentally doesn't work with, uh, and everything will be connected, you know, and really reduce the IT headache from the start. Uh, and you're going to free up that ticket office. You know, you're going to be you know, the tickets are going to be sold. And so maybe it's a customer service office. Maybe it's, you know, got a brand new use case and you don't need it at all. All right. We wanted to lay out uh, this this view uh, of, you know, what it could look like with and without advanced purchases. Uh, and really the, the punchline being that the guests that do the e-commerce pre-purchase flow not only spend more, they have a better time and they come back more frequently. You can kind of see the two examples. We gave uh, the pre-purchase a discounted lift ticket. They actually saved $20 on their lift ticket by buying it advanced. Uh, they ended up buying the uh, advanced rentals because we were able to tell them about it. And though that rental gear wasn't available on site whenever, you know, that second guest came. Uh, they pre-booked ski lessons, again, that, you know, weren't available. You know, they weren't able to get on um, the guests that showed up same day. Uh, they decided to purchase a discounted souvenir mug. Uh, that included three refills. And so they paid $40 for four drinks, whereas the guest on the right ended up buying two individual drinks each for $15. You're getting a worse deal on food and beverage already. Uh, the, the guest on the left pre-reserved lunch. Uh, it was all pre-set up uh, and they had their order in and they picked it up you know, right at the time that they had planned and spent $35 on lunch. The guest on the right grabbed and, grabbed and go uh, for lunch. They only spent $15 and actually took them longer you know, to grab the food, find a spot to eat, eat it, and then dispose of their waste. The, the guest on the left had a larger meal in less time. Uh, and then the guest on the left, uh, you know, was offered uh, to upgrade, kind of that scenario we saw before with the bounce back offer for our single day family. Uh, you know, and we're guessing that, you know, one out of 10 of these guests may decide to upgrade their single day voucher to a season pass. And we're going to hope that we get, you know, maybe on average $50. 
And so you can kind of see the summary there that, you know, from the, from the ski resort operator perspective, we, we earned ourselves $640 off this pre-purchase guest. Uh, their value of their time was high, five out of five. You know, they had quick food, they got rentals in, they had a great ski lesson and they got, you know, three refills on their discounted souvenir mug. So they, they really feel like they got a great value for their time there. And they are bounce back ready. You know, one of these 10 guests just bought a season pass and the other ones, you know, know and have, you know, great communication from our e-commerce backbone, giving them those other supplemental bounce back offers and upsells. The guests on the right, not so much. We only got $335 from them. Uh, they had an okay time, maybe three out of five, four out of five, to be fair. Disc, you know, bummed out that they weren't able to have a lesson and lunch was, you know, lack glamorous. Uh, the bounce back ready medium. You know, we don't have all of those same great technically connected ways to communicate and upsell them in the future. And it's going to be kind of up to this guest if they come back or they don't. All right, moving on from e-commerce, uh, unifying the guest experience, uh, which granted is a tough thing to wrap your head around uh, because some of us, you know, mean apps by this in our in our Excesso family. Some of us mean, you know, pre-ordering food and beverage. Some of us mean, uh, you know, directly connecting guests to, you know, the tubing hill uh, or, or other entitlements that they may want to add on. When I talk about it, I mean all the above. Uh, and it is that characteristic data that, that has all of your different needs, all of your guest offering, all of your administration tools, and all of even your staff day of, uh, you know, management tools truly integrated and connected and making a great experience first and foremost for your guests, but of course not forgetting about your staff and administrators as well. All right, we got a couple great ex examples of this. Uh, the guest experience, you know, a lot of quick benefits that, you know, you can eliminate lines so we can gather operational data. We can be in that just-in-time conversational real-time communication. Uh, we drive revenue. We saw that with the messaging. We haven't even danced around, you know, how the sales connected entitlements and food and beverage can help there too. Uh, you're going to learn about your guests. You're going to learn about the particular guests and continue the conversational tone with them. And you're going to have more global analytical learnings about your KPIs and your marketing directions for your ski resort. And your guests are going to be happy. And I, you know, that one really should be the, the first of these six items, not the last of these six items, but your guests are going to be happy. Uh, here's our local app. Uh, just uh, wanted to include the uh, the Deer Valley app that we released last ski season. There's actually a brand new revamped version of this app and quite a few others coming out soon, uh, but didn't want to jump the gun or ruin the surprise for them. So you know, keep it, keep your ear to the floor and you'll get to see some really cool new features coming both to the Deer Valley app and other apps soon. Uh, but from these screenshots, you can see a lot of that magic that we've been talking about throughout the presentation. Uh, you see the different maps and how everything is geocentrically driven. You see how things like events are even, uh, you know, part of those locations and, you know, uh, can be related to from where the guest is at today or from where other points of interest on the map are. Uh, you see the ability to reserve lift boarding. We've got our virtual queuing application, which I'll talk about just a little bit more built into the app there. Uh, and the notion that, you know, if we're virtually queuing for any of these different lifts, you know, I can get in the queue and see what the relative wait times for those are today. You see some of my preferences and some of my inputs to the system on that far right image. Uh, and even some of the other interactions on the bottom that I could uh, consider. All right, here's a couple screens showing that simplified activity sales. So over, we moved uh, over to Steamboat uh, and their mountain coaster, and we were able to do this great pilot with them back in 2020, uh, where we were selling coaster entitlements. Uh, and the big, you know, the big, uh, you know, the big wow here that we were able to achieve with Steamboat was that we did a we did a research study on balking uh, and balking meaning how frequently did guests walk up to the coaster and not be able to ride it uh, and we, we assumed at first it would be guests you know from height requirements or didn't have enough time or for whatever reason we actually found through the study it was far more operational uh, you know guests would get to the coaster without a coaster ticket where they actually couldn't buy a coaster ticket they were turned around and needed to go to a ticket office a guest would get to the coaster but wouldn't have signed a waiver and would need to be redirected to an online waiver or somewhere else to help with that waiver flow. Or even the third one, which kind of surprised us too, guests purchased a ticket online that also couldn't be redeemed at the coaster. That ticket needed to be converted to a voucher in the ticket office. And so we were really surprised early on and you know, kind of made a lot of sense why the guests were having such a hard time with this activity. Uh, and that's really where we focused and built this direct to notion out of was you know, we've got guests that may or may not have known that this coaster even existed. You know, they're seeing it for the first time and maybe the beginning of their day where they're planning and may want to ride it later. Or it could be the last part of their day. They're just noticing it on the way out and, you know, the kids are pulling at 
you know, their coattail saying, hey, let's ride the coaster before we leave. Uh, either way, that guest needs the activity right now. And if it takes more than 5, 10, 15 minutes for the guests to figure out the purchase flow, get that waiver signed and get up to the coaster, they're going to leave, you know, and that, that family is not going to convert. And so for Steamboat, one of the big, you know, the big sell points and one of the big importances that we brought to the table was we need this to be as single click as possible, as, as quick to fulfill, as easy, as as little of a headache as we can imagine. You know, first for your guests, so that that family with you know the the, uh, the coattails being pulled on doesn't leave, but also for your staff. You know, we know that this is a headache for the ticket office. We know that the coaster staff is often turning guests around, and we want to make that better for them too. Uh, and that's really what we were able to do, uh, kind of as an early pilot version of this offering with Steamboat. Uh, and it's actually quite a bit more evolved now. Uh, you know, continuing that vision for other similar, uh, you know, kind of direct to activity offerings from our guest experience perspective. All right, and then just to round that out, uh, so we talked about some of the activity uh, interactions, some of the uh, the native app backbone, which of course we have you know web applications for as well. Uh, we do a great mobile food ordering solution. Uh, our mobile food ordering you know has some you know, really great you know uh, guiding points. Uh, it does do contactless payment, a card on file through Apple Pay and Google Pay, uh, and even tap to pay. Uh, you know, lots of great COVID considered ways to. You know, reduce your burden and allow for quick throughput uh, at your eateries. Uh, we're going to promote social distancing. We're going to allow, uh, you know, remote order ahead uh, and multiple outdoor window pickup or, or even delivery to table where you can scan a QR code at the table uh, and get your food automatically brought out to where you're sitting. Uh, it's going to reduce the staff uh, and allow for a great, easy, safe fulfillment for your guests. Um, transaction sizes are going to go up, guests are going to be happy, and orders are, of course, going to have that granularity of allowing the guests to perfect them before putting in and less of the inference uh, from a wait staff member. Uh, here's a, a very early version of that mobile uh, web uh, and app ordering. Uh, and you can see here, I think, uh, I think this might be at Mammoth. I don't know if this looks like it's at Deer Valley as well. Uh, and you can see that, you know, we've got all of the normal, you know, the normal great pieces that you would expect in a, in a web uh, and app driven food and beverage ordering platform. Uh, the ability to browse and see all of the different eateries on that first image on the left before you choose. You can see some of the attributes about them. I'm seeing the ordering hours when they're open, so I might not pick somewhere that's closed. Uh, and even the location that, you know, Deer Valley was opting to be the, one of those attributes that you see right on that first screen. When I picked into that Cushing's cabin menu, I'm seeing the categories at the top uh, and then the food items built out below. And you get that great title, uh, price, a little bit of the description, and even that thumbnail image. So before you click into the detail, you have a great idea of what's being offered for each of those items. Uh, clicking into the all beef hot dog, you can see uh, our notion of attributes. So those are those configurable changes to the order that could be optional, could be required, could be for free, or could have a cost. Uh, that final, that next image, you're seeing uh, our gratuity feature, which was a, a big, uh, a big win with a lot of our staff and operators last ski season, uh, and we were able to, you know, generate quite a bit of tip revenue uh, over the December holidays for all of our food and beverage locations that were live. And as one of our, our great feedback items from our from the you know, groups that we worked with last year was, you know, wow, that that was such a easy win for our staff and made them so much warmer to the system that they felt like when they were doing good by the system, the guests saw that respected it and you know and offered them a tip because of it. Uh, the food and beverage system is definitely far more complicated than what these five screenshots are showing you, but just wanted to, you know, kind of whet the appetite and show that, you know, all of this is built and designed, you know, with those those cornerstones in mind. You know, it's geocentric. It's located at a physical location that the guests could navigate to and could understand in relation to other locations. It's tied to their personality, tied to their identity and tied to previous interactions that they've had. Uh, and it's using information about them, their, their saved identity information, their card on file, uh, even their preferences and choices that we know about them from before. All right, uh, and then capacity reservations, another uh, another offering within our connected guest experience. Uh, this is, we, we use the word capacity uh, strategically here just to get a, a little bit away from table-based uh, bookings or you know an open table alternative. Uh, what we're not uh, offering or what we don't have at this point is that bird's eye view of the table that you might get from uh, open table or a similar provider. What, what we're really trying to provide here uh, and really out of the spirit of, you know, with limited staff and, you know, trying to help, you know, facilities that are having a hard time returning to service from COVID, you know, if you want to understand and limit your total throughput, we can help. 
And so what we've done, you can see the mammoth example here with McCoy Station, Yodeler, uh, and Canyon Lodge that we were offering timed-based reservations to enter those facilities. Uh, McCoy Station was really just a global uh, you know, count to make sure that it didn't get too busy or too uh, too crowded inside at any one time. And the Yodeler was, it was more so working in the classical uh, restaurant reservation capacity where you would book a, a slot for your group and then get table service once you arrived. All right, that completes uh, the second uh, of three bullets uh, where we we're talking about the connected guest experience. Uh, this last bullet is, of course, part of that connected guest experience as well. Uh, but we wanted to separate it and talk about it all on its own because we think it has a really special spot uh, with ski this uh, this season. Uh, and so it's reducing long lines and specifically reducing long lines at your lifts, your gondolas, your large indoor facilities, your food halls and your dining areas, uh, and even your rentals buildings and your guest self-service or your guest service uh, facilities. So it's it's lines, it's crowdings, it's capacity. It's anywhere that by having too many people or too many people wanting to do something, you have a problem. And so we call it virtual queuing. Uh, and it's the notion of instead of being in a physical line where you, you know, of course, can see how many people are in front of you and keep track as you walk ahead, we place you into a virtual line. And the virtual line works the same way as a normal line. If you're the first into the virtual line, you'll be the first out of the virtual line. But unlike a normal line, you don't need to stand in that line and, and wait until you're at the front. You can activate the session, make a reservation, and then virtually queue. During that time where you're virtually queuing, you're going to have an active countdown uh, on the screen to see you know, how much time is left in your queue before you need to return. And so you'll have a really good ability to predict, do I have time to get a coffee? You know, can I take my boots off and stretch? You know, am I able to run and switch out these rentals you know, because I have enough time to wait? that I think it'll fit, you know, that'll be granular. It, it, it ebbs and flows. If people in front of you leave the queue, the system would automatically update and let you know, hey, it's gonna be a bit quicker. You know, you're gonna get on faster than you expected. Should there be a weather hold or lift operation issue or need to close down the lift for just a little bit, that's also indicated to the guests where that countdown could freeze and then you give them some messaging, hey, we're pausing for a bit, we'll resume. Uh, or even, you know, just slow down a bit and, and adjust slightly, you know, without the guests really even noticing, but just to keep the system in check. Of course, when that queue is completed, you're, you're ushered to return to the lift. Uh, you join what we call the buffer queue. And that's that short, very fixed amount of people constantly arriving to get on the lift that, that's very understood and manageable and by the system contained to always be the same size. You then would board uh, the lift or gondola and go about maybe booking your next activity. Uh, and it doesn't have to be a lift or gondola. That, that could uh, be enter the rentals facility or, or go into McCoy's station. Uh, really anything that needs to have a virtual weight and, and plan capacity, you know, this could fit really well with. A lot of quick, easy benefits. You know, you, you don't have lines. You get to save that space and, you know, use that time with your guests elsewhere. Uh, lots of notifications. There's lots of ins and outs. You know when it's your time to board. You know when things have changed. Uh, and you know when, you know, there's another great route just to stay in that just-in-time communication with your guests. Uh, this technology is very proven. Uh, it's been used at you know theme parks uh, throughout the world, uh, and it's something that you know we consider you know pretty well understood uh, and well well tuned to ensure that when your throughputs change, when your lifts need to go on a hold, when you have those special situations, it's it's not the first time you and I you know your company and ours are needing to experience this. It's something that that we've experienced many times in the past, and we have great operational standards and suggestions for how you can work with us to handle it too. We're going to get a ton of data out of this, tons of operational data on the throughputs of your lifts, uh, the regular capacities and uphill capacities, and, and you, even how those change, how on busy days, you know, the, the throughput you thought you had may not actually be the case, or the guest satisfaction you thought you had may not actually be the case. Uh, and that ties into guest behavior insights, you know, which, which of your guests are choosing what? When are your guests using the virtual queuing? What lifts and facilities are they virtual queuing for? And is there any characteristic driven insights to which of your guests are, are or are not, you know, involving themselves in these applications? Uh, and very much with it being a proven technology, it's turnkey. Uh, this one is figured out uh, and this one does work day one uh, and can be set up for you, you know, right away. All right, I wanted to show this video. This is a, the virtual queuing product, but it's actually with a little bit of a different flavor. Uh, included inside of it, we consider this hybrid virtual queuing and timed reservations. And so take everything I just said about being in a virtual line 
and imagine that you also wanted to allow timed based bookings. And so I could take, you know, timed bookings from my eatery, but anyone that walked up, you know, kind of the way it normally looks at a restaurant could have an available table. Now, if there's no tables available, you would kind you would typically need to look to your upcoming reservations to let a guest know how long their wait is going to be. And I'm sure if you've been to a restaurant, typically the, the host staff generally just guesses at this. They're like, yeah, well, I see a bunch of bookings are coming up at six. It's 545 now. So those guests haven't arrived. Well, I think it might be a 15, 20 minute wait. Let's say 30 minutes to be safe, because the truth is they honestly don't usually know. And so we have solved that problem by pairing together timed based bookings with the ability to virtually queue for those just walking up which really gives you know, a lot of different demographic guests flexibility at your facility. A guest that wants to arrive in the morning and not only plan their lunch date you know, with their entire family to come meet back at the base lodge and you know, get, be back at 1230 can do that in this system. Uh, and the guest that you know, doesn't wanna plan that you know, at 1245 you know, wanders down the hill and is hungry can join a 15 minute virtual wait until the next table could be free for them. Uh, it really opens up your fulfillment and allows a single system, this, this one virtual queuing application, to handle lots of different demands from your guests. Uh, and we haven't even touched on the upsell. You know, what if you wanted to skip that line? You know, what if you wanted to get into the facility sooner? Uh, or what if you wanted to enable this person to never have to wait, but to have a supreme front of the line pass you know, every time that, uh, they, that the other guests aren't even noticing that they've got? Uh, and so there's a lot of different, you know, great, cool applications of the virtual queuing application that I think we're just you know kind of dusting over the surface of with ski we're really excited with our current partners that are that are rolling it out this season and, and using it at their facilities and you know, just kind of wanted to share it as you know both something that we feel really really established we feel that we really understand but but granted is new to ski and you know we're just figuring out some of the form fits within the ski environment um, so should you be curious and want to know more you know we, we definitely would love to talk about how we see this fitting within your facility all right, and then so Steamboat, uh, as you saw in some of the uh, the examples, uh, is one of our great resorts uh, currently using our virtual queuing application. Uh, and we got this, you know, just kind of to share from them that the Accesso queuing system was very easy to use, both for our staff and guests. Several of our guests commented they loved seeing the time countdown, uh, and they were meaning there the time until it was time for them to come to the, the activity, and it felt reassured they knew exactly how long they had still to wait and how much time they had to explore or you know, to spend in the village or to do other things while they were waiting. All right, just tying it all together. Uh, now that I think that we've gotten through those three items of e-commerce and really planning in advance, that connected guest experience and guest identity and really guest characteristic driven, driven magic, uh, and then virtually queuing, uh, and virtually queuing for things that conventionally you would have lines for, but also considering virtually queuing in places that may be brand new, uh, like rentals facilities, ticket offices, or even eating facilities too. So why partner with Accesso? Uh, there's a couple, you know, great reasons on the right. You know, we have a lot of experience. We've been doing, uh, you know, queuing uh, and all kinds of ticket sales and you know, great offers for a very long time. Uh, we're very dynamic. Uh, you know, we we like to change things on the fly. We 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 work with our customers. You know, not only to perfect and better you know, our products that have been out there for a long time, but to adjust and grow their ideas and our products into things that are you know, completely new. Uh, we maintain, you know, we have a 24 seven call center that is you know, very well staffed of super knowledgeable coworkers of mine. Uh, and you know, we definitely recognize that theme parks, ski resorts, and really our, our primary clients operate on Saturdays. They operate late on Fridays. They are open on Christmas and they are open on July 4th. And so we know that. Uh, and we are here to maintain and support you, you know, throughout the thick and thin uh, and recognize that your business operates, you know, probably in a very different way than, you know, most of, you know, of your friends and family's businesses might. Uh, and that, you know, as they change, as things like COVID come about, as technology grows and adapts and, you know, new things surface, we want to be on the forefront, you know, figuring it out, working with you and, you know, determining, you know, back to that, you know, that first quote at the beginning of the deck. How do we allow the guests to remember that they're there to ski? You know, how do we allow the guests to, to be calm and to be relaxed, to have confidence that their day is planned, that they, they've got everything figured out, that they're going to have a good time in the snow? Uh, and we think it's you know, through these technological innovations and really through simplifying with a guest first dynamic approach. All right, I'll leave you just one more quote uh, from our Altera Mountain Company leadership. 
Uh, over the past two years, we've seen the power of Accesso technology through our collaboration on the Icon Pass app, which has enabled us to help provide our guests with new technologies that offer convenience and a seamless experience. All right, that was all I have ready for you. I really, really appreciate you watching this presentation. And should you have any more questions, you know, please reach out to uh, all of my friends and family here at Accesso. My name's Kevin, uh, and should you have any questions for me directly, feel free to reach out to kevin.bryce at accesso.com. Thanks so much.